Well, we know there's a few things that we want to drag that we already solved for, summation W being one of them. 27,348 pounds, X bar, 7.37 feet, and then M overturning, 63,515 pound feet. Those are gonna be crucial for us here today. Now, the first thing we want to do is ultimately find E, our eccentricity, which we know is equal to M over P. P, in this case, is our summation of our weight, M, simply put, is our overturning moment, but there's an additional piece here with a retaining structure that helps our case. We actually get to subtract some moment um, or reduce some of our overturning moment based on the eccentricity, the local eccentricity, so I'm gonna call it EW, of the, of the summation of the weight relative to the center of the structure. So we have our base, and if we split our base into two equal parts, 6.25 and 6.25, that leaves us the center point. And we have our summation of mass with our eccentricity, which is X bar. That X bar we know is 7.37 feet, which means it's beyond the center line of our um, midpoint of our base. So that creates an eccentricity, which is EW. And we then also have our overturning moment, which is happening over here, MOT, about point A, because that's what all is happening here. Um, and because our moment direction is, we're showing it as uh, counterclockwise, well, this summation of weight times EW is creating a clockwise moment, we'll call it moment R again, moment resisting. It's not the same thing as moment resisting that we saw for before. But that contribution helps uh, helps our case. Because ultimately what we're trying to find is some resultant big R. And so that EW gets multiplied by summation of weight. Let's do all that and let's solve for E. And there we have it. And EW was just X bar minus um, one half of the length of your base. And that gets you 1.12 feet. All that plugged in spits out the following, 1.2 feet. That E is equal to, um, if I, you know what, I'm gonna go green dash here. Went down to our resultant, I made that crooked, I'll do this. This is the E that we just solved for. And we also could then solve for a unit known as E prime, which is then the distance from the resultant to the point at which you're summing your moment, which is that lowercase a. Next, we need to determine what kind of equations we're using to solve our bearing pressure. For that, we need to know if E is less than or equal to L over six. And that will determine which category of equations we're gonna to use to solve our bearing pressure. L is the length of your base in this direction. So this is L. And then the thickness in and out of the page is B, which today we did a one foot strip. So L over six is equal to 12.5 over six, which gets you 2.08 feet, which is greater than E. So we're good there. So we are in this range, which is actually really nice. And that means that Q min uh, equals the following equation. And Q max is the same equation with a plus. All right, and there we have it. And ultimately what's going to be happening is we have, again, we have our footing scenario here. And since we know that we're in this range and we know that we have moment cranking like this, we are going to have just intuitively understanding that we're gonna have a higher bearing pressure towards the point A, towards the toe of our retaining structure. That's just intuitively what happens with cantilevered structures or uh, cantilevered retaining structures. So this will be your Q max. And over here will be your Q min. Well, let's plug everything in. That gets you 928 PSF. And this is a pressure, this is a bearing pressure. So PSF, okay, we're in line. 
and then Q max is the same thing, but with a plus. That gets us 3,452 PSF. And in today's example, uh, it actually didn't give us an allowable bearing pressure that we needed to adhere to, but let's just say for today that we met our criteria and we'll say that our allowable bearing pressure, something else that is also given in a geotechnical report, we'll say today we were looking for 4,000 PSF we had to be under. And for this, we have succeeded in doing that. So we are okay. So all of our global stability checks are met. Thank you everyone who's been here today. I know this video was a little too long. Next video, I'm gonna be doing rebar and the concrete portion of the design. But hey, if you did find yourself learning something new, leave a like down below if you know, you're feeling that vibe. If not, hey, that's okay, next time. Leave a comment if I wasn't clear on something. And if you wanna see more of my videos and be updated all the time, subscribe obviously. And if you wanna take it that one step further, baby, join Team Kesteva. Every contribution goes just directly back into the channel to help me create more structural engineering know-how videos uh, in better quality, better explanation, just hopefully better overall. So I appreciate everyone already who has joined the channel. And uh, yeah, if you wanna check out some more engineering videos, click over here or maybe up top or over here. I'm not quite sure where they're gonna be. But until next time, the year 2023, thank you everyone who's tuned in for the year of 2022. It's gonna be an even better year moving forward. And I'm very, very thankful for all of you who have watched so far. And I'm just excited to continue this process with all of you. Let's keep learning together. Let's keep being better engineers. Peace team. See ya.